The Nike Air Zoom Pegasus 38 versus the Nike Zoom X Invincible Run. Two shoes built almost like complete opposites, yet do the same job. Let's talk about it. What's up everybody? Welcome back to the vlog. My name is Full Platocha. Today, we are discussing two Nike everyday training shoes, their differences, their similarities, and which one you should probably consider in the future for your everyday runs. Of course, that is the Nike Air Zoom Pegasus 38 and the Nike Zoom X Invincible Run. So before we get into it, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel. You guys know how this goes. If you're a continued supporter of the content, thank you so much. Love you guys a lot. Without further ado, let's get into it. So first things first, I'll write the specs up for both shoes about here. What you'll notice probably right away if you're looking at it this way, is that they're not too different from one another in terms of weight and stack height. They have some similarities in that sense, and just like some minor differences to them, which can ultimately affect their performances. But again, it just depends on how you approach the shoe overall, or how sensitive at least you could be to the differences behind them. So I think what we'll do is start off with the major differences between the shoes, and then we'll get into their similarities. So first things first, Nike Air Zoom Pegasus 38. It's got a stack height of about 10 millimeters with a 28 millimeter heel drop and a 18 millimeter drop in the forefoot. It uses React Foam 100% of the way in the midsole. Outsole obviously looks like this, uses some kind of, of course, signature Pegasus 38 rubber uh, setup that they've got here. And then they've got this Air Zoom pocket basically inside the forefoot of the shoe, which gives it this extra snap, this extra jump in the shoe, which basically does help in a lot of instances. I know that in the first launch of the Pegasus 37, it was definitely noticeable and it was definitely fresh to run in a shoe like that. This one, I'm still getting accustomed to experiencing that snap once again. Obviously, that's a whole different rabbit hole that we can go down if we were to discuss in a different video, but I digress. Of course, in this upper, it's a mesh textile upper, which is designed to be flexible, breathable. You know how these things go. They want you to have as much breathability without absorbing as much moisture in this upper as possible to not add additional weight to what I think is kind of a heavy shoe as it is. Of course, the way it's built here with the tongue is that the tongue is going to sit just directly center to your foot to allow your mid sole area. Basically, the way the tongue is built is to sit directly in the center of your foot with the midfoot area having some room to tighten those laces so you get that lock that prevents the heel movement in the shoe overall. And that in itself makes it a good ride. It kind of eliminates the issues of potential heel motion and heel movement and some slippage in the shoe that you might experience otherwise in something like a Pegasus 37. So ultimately, this is kind of fixing some of those issues that was presented there before. In the shoe collar, it's plush. It's got a little bit of cushion in there and it's very comfortable. It doesn't really dig into your heel unless you're experiencing a lot of friction or you just have some really soft skin there on the back of your heel. But overall, I think it's a good ride pretty much overall. So the Zoom X Invincible, as you can see by the stack height of nine millimeters, it's not too different from the Pegasus 37 in that fashion. It's gonna, if you're not really sensitive to major differences in the stack height, it's not gonna feel like the stack height's gonna really bother you all that much. But contrary to what the Pegasus 38 was providing, it's using Zoom X foam all the way across the midsole, which is, again, a very fast, very snappy foam, and whatever you put into it is what you're gonna get out, and a little bit more, at least in my opinion, in that sense. In the outsole, it's got this wide pattern here in the midfoot and the heel area, basically giving you what I think is a great road grip overall. I think somebody described this as like a waffle pattern. I guess that's the case. I mean, again, it just, it's kind of a checkerboard in my opinion, but again, this is just giving you as much surface area as possible to grip the ground and just kind of push off in that kind of sense. So again, I've been watching this corner area and this bottom area of the shoe just to see how it affects my day-to-day -day running. Currently not a whole lot of effect in terms of losing grip or something like that, but I am still observing it, still working through it just to see what's going on. In the upper, it's Flyknit or some kind of Neo upgraded version of the Flyknit that we're seeing in a lot of 2021 shoes that are coming out right now. And it, in this particular case, it's not as breathable as I thought it was going to be, but it is still pretty effective in just doing its job of just getting a little bit of air in the shoe just to prevent all the moisture from building up and ultimately making the shoe heavy 
and making it less and less comfortable to run in in addition to uh, again like how much the shoe weighs you don't want to have all that moisture in the shoe again in the shoe lace area the tongue does run just center across the foot as the pegasus 38 did and it gives you this ability to lock down the midfoot which then will in, in turn help you lock down the heel now in the heel area, we have a lot of cushion, a lot more than I think the Pegasus 38, in my opinion. And it's also got a lot of cushion on the outside as kind of a design feature, I would say. And right now, again, if you do get this shoelace lock pretty good, you still have a little bit of what I would call moving parts in this shoe collar that could kind of affect the lock overall in this shoe. Again, you have to experiment with that to get that lock down 100%, but I know the first times I was running with this shoe, there was a lot of instability if I didn't lock down this area. Just my, you know, take with it, my experience with it overall. And then, anything else I think? Um, no, I think that's the majority of what we need to cover here in terms of their major differences independently of one another. If we put them side to side, I think we're going to see where these things begin to differ from a performance standpoint. So, how did this video come about where we decided to compare these two everyday trainers that look so different to one another, yet they accomplish a very similar goal? Well, it's quite simple. I mean, obviously they're both in the market at about the same time, and they do have very different rides, even though they accomplish the same purpose of being an everyday kind of recovery run trainer overall just obviously you can tell by the differences right away one shoe is just much bulkier it's much bigger overall and in in a way it's kind of a good thing this is of course what i think a lot of shoes that you might recognize is kind of like the hoka one one for example have this kind of design where just a lot of you know just heel stack just a, it's not even a heel stack just a high stack of foam overall just to kind of give you that cushion when you're riding on the road and real, realistically, like again, the Zoomax is just supposed to be, in my opinion, a very fast foam. And, and again, in my personal experience, it's kind of unstable despite the fact that the midfoot or the forefoot and this heel area are a little bit wide. Just my take, again, with experimenting with this lock, I could probably fix that issue. But again, it's designed to just be a nice, easy recovery run kind of shoe, even though if you try to push fast in it, you can have some fast workouts in it. Just again, there's faster everyday trainers that are available besides the ZoomX Invincible Run if you so choose to go in that direction. I can probably give some suggestions in the comments below if you are looking for something along that scope. Now, if we're talking about the Pegasus 38, basically what's going on here is again, this is not using ZoomX whatsoever. It's using React, which is more responsive, a lot more stable, and it gives you that more stability-based ride in the shoe. But the major trade-off is that the React by itself would cause you to lose the springy speed that you would otherwise have in a shoe of this kind of build. Obviously, Nike's way to combat this is to put that air zoom pocket in this particular shoe. And it does help a little bit with the initial snap when you hit the ground and you launch. It helps a little bit, but it's probably not enough to make it something like a tempo trainer, at least in my opinion. This is where if you were looking for something more of like an everyday tempo, everyday racer kind of trainer, you would probably move more into like the tempo next percent, maybe even the Vaporfly next percent direction for that type of speed and whatnot, if you're trying to stay like as a Nike loyalist, that is. So overall, again, because it's using React, it's supposed to be more stable, more responsive, and it's supposed to give you a comfortable everyday ride. So just my hot take, I would not use this on my speed workouts. This would be strictly a recovery, kind of easy day type of shoe. So if you have to choose between the two shoes right now, um, as a daily trainer, which one should you pick? Again, I'm not like the guru of telling you which one definitively you should pick. There's a lot of other factors outside of this video that may affect your decision, such as your budget, which I think the last time I checked, this shoe was like almost 200 US dollars. I think it's like 180. And then this one I think was running at about 120 wherever I bought it. So if you're looking for something a little bit cheaper and still have, you know, this signature Pegasus feel out of a nike shoe the 38 is definitely a good play it's just don't expect any speed out of it don't expect any like glamorous i i mean like tempo threshold workouts out of it and definitely don't expect any prs just expect some comfort expect your easy runs to feel nice trust the shoe that you won't get injured more or less again that's just my opinion with it 
as long as you're not like doing something like rolling your ankle or getting hit by you know some vehicles or anything i don't recommend that whatsoever don't blame the shoe for that that's like a whole different issue and then again if you have the budget for like a zoom x invincible again this thing even though you have to play around with the stability of it because the zoom x is so springy and so unstable you're gonna have an interesting ride in this overall where you'll have that everyday fuel you'll have that everyday stability on the road or instability depending on how again you you figure out your lock with the shoe but you're gonna have something that's just gonna feel very springy very soft on the road and probably really comfortable once you get this shoe kind of figured out it's not a novice shoe whatsoever like you need to kind of play around with this a couple of times before you commit to the idea of okay I know how to run in this particular shoe I'm gonna have a good time with it so again, um, despite this heel stack, that's probably another good point here. If you're a heel striker, just my take, heel striking in the shoe, despite how much foam is in this heel and despite how wide it is, I just kind of still don't recommend it only because of how unstable it is. And I just, it's just my two cents that like heel striking in the shoe is just so unstable because of how much weight is still on the upper here. And I, I mean, on the upper side of the shoe. To prevent like a sound heel hit that would eventually roll into something that you can use as leverage for a push or you know that compression decompression motion i can see why it would work i just wouldn't go in that direction with that now on the other hand the pegasus 38 i think there's just enough stack height in this uh, heel react area where if you were to heel strike you can still have a nice roll that would be nice and stable and obviously i think you would just be better off as a heel striker to be using this particular shoe and it's also partially in the design of the outsole itself that would help you roll your foot into that heel strike that can eventually give you you know your compression and decompression into the air zoom pocket that's in this shoe so yeah overall i would just say if you're a little more of an experienced runner that wants like an everyday recovery shoe maybe the zoom x invincible is the play if you're still kind of just new to running and you're experimenting and you just want a shoe that's comfortable that can get you through the workout in one piece probably the pegasus 38 is more or less your play just my two cents on it again nike doesn't pay me to make these opinions these are just things that i would have experienced and just overall kind of gone with so i think i'm gonna end the video there if you agree with my assessment of both of the shoes definitely let me know in the comments below if you have some disagreements or some questions also leave those in the comments below i will be happy to answer them so that being said i think we're gonna end the video here thanks so much for watching i'll see you guys real soon